And, and, and you know what? Like last time we had you on, uh, it was beginning of October, and uh, I feel like we didn't really know, know you all that well at that point. You know, through Twitter, this and that. Now we're in group chats together. You know, messaging every day about Calcio. We we know we know everything about uh, your Calcio opinions and how you feel about <laughs> you play right Tegi, But we'll still talk about it here on the here on the podcast. Um, you want to just get started? Just give us your. Let, let's start right away with the England game, I guess. I mean. Give us your thoughts on 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 that performance. Yeah, I mean, I feel like it's just very underwhelming the way we've come out so far in defending the title. It's I don't know what Mancini's mindset is. I don't I don't really like the the formations he's he's throwing out there and and kind of the the mixture of players. I understand, you know, we have a bunch of injuries and stuff, and and he's kind of limited in certain positions. Um, and he also picked up some injuries in the England game, but I just. I wasn't really too too in love with it. They looked so flat. There's some players on the team too that it's like, come on, like I'm glad what you were able to do three years ago, but at the same time, you know, uh, it's kind of time to move on and 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 give some. We have an abundance of midfield talent. We should be allowing them to to step up and and participate in these games. And and it's just yeah, I mean, two one loss. Uh, thank goodness, you know, I think you got a goal for us there towards uh, in the second half to kind of give us a little bit of hope going into the next game, but. Yeah, it was a very lackluster performance, to to say the least, with that one. I think it was just even like a, a you know, a tale of two halves. Uh, John Marco, you can correct me if I'm wrong. I mean, uh, the first half, I mean, England puts in those two goals, especially the penalty right before halftime. Um, two, you know, uh, set piece esque uh, plays. Obviously, the PK and obviously the uh, the cross uh, into the box there and. And uh, I think it was Rice who got on the end of that. But mm-hmm. um, I think Italy did do better uh, in the second half. It's not sure. doing anything drastic because, you know, we saw obviously the outcome and, and, and just uh, the, the gameplay as itself. But um, I think the second half was something to build on. I'm not going to say it was the best Italy we've ever seen. It's far from that. Um, but yeah, you, you obviously mentioned Retegi. He's been a uh, Rete goal. He's been all over the news. He's been all over uh, Italian media, English Italian media. Uh, cultural media as a whole so um i guess just your thoughts on because we have both sides i mean we see both sides of the spectrum with red tech you know the, he's argentinian he, he's now italian well he has italian uh, ancestry he's playing for the italian national team um i guess just your thoughts on that whole um just i guess the player coming really out of nowhere i mean i can't say i knew about him before this i don't know if any of you guys did but um he seemed to really burst onto this scene, performed well, obviously in two games that he's uh, played for Italy, two goals and two appearances. I guess just your overall um, uh, your overall thoughts on, on Retegi's performance. What do you think he can bring and is he here to stay? Yeah, I mean, you know, ironically enough, he was a player I kind of discovered uh, a few months ago, really. I was actually watching. Okay. So in 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 the U.S., we have Paramount Plus, and we could you you could actually watch the Argentinian league there. And there was a midfielder I found out about that I was really interested in, who plays for Rosario Central. Um, you know, I tweet about him a lot. Gino Infantino. He's a kid that actually mentioned he's trying to switch from Argentina to to Italy as well. So I wanted to yeah. watch more of his games too to kind of see, you know, because obviously when you watch YouTube compilations, they're always going to look amazing, you know. So I wanted to see though how he actually plays in a real game. And the first game I actually happened to see him in was in a Tigre game. And I got to see um, Matteo Retegi play that game, and he scored a goal. And I'm watching his movement, and I'm watching his touch and his passing, and I was like, wow, this guy kind of reminds me a little bit of, I literally said watching him as a mix of, like, Icardi and, and Martinez. You know, he's got the finishing of Icardi, but he actually is able to do more with the ball at his feet, um, kind of like Lautaro can. So I was like, hey, maybe this is a guy that worth, you know, keeping an eye out on. Um, kind of forgot about him, and then one of my friends who's an Inter fan brought him up again recently, even before he was even called up to the Italian national team, and I and he put him back on my radar, and I noticed he was the leading goal scorer in the Argentinian league, which some people may like scoff at, but if you could score goals in one league, I feel like you can score goals anywhere, and my, that's my personal opinion. Like if you if you're a finisher, you're a finisher. It doesn't matter. All you have to do is get on the end of the ball, and typically if you're scoring there, I feel like you'll be better in Europe just because the services you'll be getting will be from better players. So sure, yeah. he, he ended up being someone that, that I liked. And once the, the news came out that he was going to be playing for Italy, I got super excited about it. And I mean, I, did I anticipate goals in his first two games? No, I thought it would take a little bit of time to get acclimated for sure. But seeing how yeah. he was able to get on the end of, well, his, his calmness in finishing the first one and then his, his heading ability on the second one. I mean, 
I do think that he is going to be here to stay. I don't think Mancini is going to allow him to leave. We haven't, I mean, we have kind of been starved of strikers. You know, we haven't really had a long history of good strikers if you really look at the Italian national team. So hopefully this guy can, can be a, an impactful player for us for years to come. I have to like concur on that. Um, uh, Redeghi, like I like I think I saw his name on a list once of like available like Italians like overseas that haven't been capped yet. I remember uh, I have to look up the account on Twitter. I can't think of it right now, but I remember it was like in a very extensive. Yeah, list. somebody put that. Out. I forgot who it was too. Yeah, and I reshared it because I was like, oh, this is fascinating, you know. And uh, yeah. it's 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 great. Honestly, it's great. It's the it's. I mean, like, nobody should be complaining about it. I, apparently, there was people arguing about it on Twitter. I honestly don't think it's a big deal. I mean, we had guys like Jorginho, where it was his great-grandfather that was Italian, mm-hmm. and he decided to play for the Italian national team. You know, uh, Retegi is just going to confirm through his grandfather, which is fine, honestly. Um, he's he just want, he want, he's happy that he gets to represent uh, Italy on an, on, a, on, a, on an international stage. And, fuck, score two goals already in two games. You know, two yeah, I mean, it's, it's, What more can you ask amazing. for him? And, you know, it's uh, it's refreshing. It's refreshing. To go back to what Adriano said of a tale of two halves, I kind of agree. But one thing I don't really like about the team right now. Sorry, my ear's a little itchy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, one thing I don't really like about the team right now is the fact that th- that little wake-up call had to come in the second half. And it's like, why can't you guys kind of, you know, kind of start pumping the gas a bit uh, after the first one? You know, like... Um, you you concede early, then you concede a penalty, and you guys are all in a disarray. Fine, I understand that maybe the the halftime whistle gave them a chance to like get a breather and like, um, you know, like collect get, collect their bearings and stuff. But uh, like it was almost a three zero game. They were almost three yeah. zero down. You know, like uh, it's yeah, Grealish missed, <laughs> but like, like one of the it, worst it, misses I've ever seen in my life. By the way, like that was I was crazy. I was that was. We could have put that in uh, at the park here, you know. I or, think or, any or, one of us where, could have finished that, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. But yeah, either way, you know, it's it's something that, uh, like, it shouldn't be getting to that point for them to realize, oh, crap, now we got to actually try to win this game. And I think Mancini got his changes correct, but it was a bit too late. Um, but I like the fire the team showed in the second half. But once again, it's it's something that's like, that's that's too late. You need to get that fire yeah. instantly. You go down one goal. Get that fire immediately and, and you know, fight back. It, it shouldn't be like uh, after a halftime break where you have to collect yourself again. I agree. I agree. And also, also just even like, I don't even think they even started with it. much of a fire. I don't know if you guys yeah. agree or disagree, but I, no, I, agree. You know, I, I didn't even see it from the, from the get go. Right. You know, so uh, like Johnny said, it took going down by a goal, then going down by two to get some sort of a spark. It wasn't the greatest of sparks. It was a beautiful play. Don't get me wrong. I mean, the goal was was fantastic. We haven't seen that uh, type of type of movement, type of play uh, in the attacking third, uh, in the final third. Sorry, in, in a while, right? So um, I, I don't know. I liked it. Um, you know, I, I know the lineup was obviously uh, um, you know something that many people pointed to, saying, you know, why is this guy here? Why is that guy there? Um, I don't know if that's the direction we want to go. I know Nick had to say I wanted to say something, but um, I just wanted to just quickly say on uh, Retegi again. This is a guy, even I didn't think he would start the first game. And Mancini, as much as we give him shit, and as much as maybe he shouldn't be here anymore after uh, not qualifying for the World Cup, he had enough balls and he had enough, you know, uh, brains to to put him in. Uh, and it paid off in, in a short uh, amount of time. So, yeah, again, you know, love him or hate him, I think uh, that was probably a right call because Kamaka has been kind of, um, lackluster, know, kind of really, yeah. He's, uh, lackluster, just not himself. And he, and Skamak is a guy I like too, right? I, I, I same, really do yeah. uh, like what Skamak brings. Um, but yeah, Retegi, I, I don't know. I think we have no choice but to continue on uh, whoever's hot and whoever's going to be able to provide. Again, a lot of people giving the kid a lot of flack for for not being Italian. You know, he has some blood, he has some lineage. Uh, we're going to take that. He wants to be here. He wants to wear the shirt. Um, and if you know what, if we look elsewhere at other countries, and I hate to compare, but you look at other top nations and, you know, the France I mean, of the you, world. You, you, England, go look at, yeah, England, you go look world. right at France, man. Like Right. And I mean, this is not, these are not, you know, French born players. So some of them are from, from all over the place. So, um, or England, the same idea, right? So, 
Um, I, I don't think you should knock uh, players for cho- choosing the alley or the, the pathway they want to go, um, especially if they're able to provide for, for, for your country. So for Ortegi, I think that's probably where uh, he'll fit because I don't see him getting into the Argentina team right now, at least, especially coming off a World Cup win and all the attackers that they have. So uh, honestly, I think enough with the hate and I think we should cherish uh, and, and appreciate what, what, uh, what we have. Yeah, no, I, I completely agree because it's like if you're a young player coming up, although some may say he's not yeah. young because he's 23, but well, 23, you know, you, he's, he's, <laughs> he's, he's going you, into his you, punch. But if right? you look at you look at him though, you know he's he, he'd be stuck behind Lautaro and Julian Alvarez. Like, do you really want to sit around and like not get your opportunities yeah. when you know, you look at the Italian national team? All right, so Immobile is pretty much probably done with the national team. If we're being honest, I don't think he's really. He might get a call up, maybe. I, I mean, I, I think it's time to kind of move on yeah. from that, but. You never know with Mancini, really. I mean, he even said the door's not closed on Mario Balotelli, so we don't really know what's 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 possible out there. But you know, you see Skamaka, and then you, you're a young player. Like there is a good chance for him to break through, and obviously he's taken the opportunity and he's he's taken the you know full advantage of it. So I mean, hats off to him. And who knows? Like he, I mean, we could have him really what next three, four tournaments. You know, at the very least, if if he can kind of keep up this pace. So. Listen, we, we should be excited at this opportunity that, you know, we, we have people who do want to represent the colors. It feels like a lot yeah. of times that even though some players may be Italian, that they don't really have a, a sense of pride. And they and maybe there is a sense of arrogance, too, because it's Italy. They think if they just show up, people are going to fear them. And, and we, we see that, you know, no one's really kind of fearing us. And we don't have really a leader on the team like a Cannavaro or a Maldini or, or a Nesta, someone who, you know, could really galvanize and, and kind of inspire you know, mom- yeah. moments and in, in, to kind of like regroup in, in poor situations. So I think that, you know, whatever we can throw out there that can maybe be beneficial, we should take full advantage of it. So, And, and back to the players of, um, you know, Italy going out and getting players that are necessarily born in Italy or whatever. I mean, uh, Italians, we're all over the we're all over the world, right? We all have yeah. le- eligibility to play. Obviously, we suck. We're not making the national team. But th- think about think about all the Italian immigrants. For yourself, that, man, I I, I yeah, definitely make a good job on the left back, right back spot. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, me left bench, yeah, we're, left we're, bench, left, left bench, right bench, exactly. <laughs> yeah, Marco will be center bench, so it's hey, good. It still counts, right? <laughs> yeah, it's it. Think about all the all the Italian immigrants. Uh, how many players? Yeah. on other national teams that could even potentially play for Italy. So if if other teams are doing it, you know, Italy, the FIGC, Mancini, they just have to get a step ahead. You think you think of the Brazilian national team, how many of those guys could play for Italy? Mancini should go down to Brazil uh, once a year, scout some players, check check the last name, check the grandfather, check the great grandfather. Okay, you're good to go. And he calls them up to the Italian national team in, instead of Brazil. Like like a player like Gabriel Martinelli, he played he played right uh, with, in the World Cup um, yep. and with Brazil, and he was a player there was always talk about potentially playing for Italy. Yeah, and can you imagine why if not, he flipped him? Yeah, why not a player? Why not a player like him? Um, maybe that could be the case now with uh, Retegi. Um, I feel like they have they have a pretty good success right with the South American uh, players. At you know look. Last last year, a win. They had three Brazilians when they won the World Cup in 06. There was Cameronese, the Ar- Argentine. So there's a bunch of Italian immigrants on there. Go out and take advantage of these guys, especially if they're proud to be Italian, as much as uh, as we are as well, you know. And yeah, I mean, look at Christian Vieri too. Like he was born in Australia. Yeah, he's he Australian, played, exactly. You know. Could have played yeah. there, and he, he chose that. Like, well, would, would we have been upset if he wasn't on the team? Like, if he decided to go play for Australia? Like, I mean, would people have made a big deal that he chose Italy? I, I don't, I just, I don't get like this problem, like why people have that. You know, a guy from who's Argentinian, who, who maybe born in Argentina but has Italian descent. Like, what does yeah. it matter? Like, you know. I, so yeah, like a uh, great, great point that you brought up, uh, John Marks. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna have fun <laughs> with that. I'm gonna make it a thing. I will oh, make it a thing. No, I will no. will it into existence. Thanks, thanks to you and Nima, that's never going to go away. So. <laughs> hey, you're the one who wanted to have who's the best Johnny competition. <laughs> Lots. Just I'm busting balls. I did uh, lose that, so yeah, all right. Um, okay, no, but back to the uh, a serious discussion, I guess. Uh, <laughs> I think what people have an issue with is the fact that – because. Um, uh, I forgot. I think it was a uh, Twitter account was a Spina hater. I was discussing with it today. Uh, <laughs> funny Napoli account. But anyways, <laughs> um, 
you know, like he was he was complaining about the fact, like, why are people complaining about this? Why are they hating this? What's the issue with having the fact that uh, Rete Gol is basically, um, you know, an Argentinian Italian? You know, he's not naturalized. But like, why are people arguing this? Like, when we're all fans, we're all first, second, third generation. You know, uh, yeah. and um, what what whoever he was listening essentially, and like. Uh, I brought up the point, like, maybe it's not, they're, maybe they're not expressing it well. So let's play devil's advocate. Maybe they're just not expressing it well. But besides the obvious, like, ignorance and hatred and, you know, like, dumbed down room temperature take, uh, room temperature IQ take, uh, maybe it's because, you know, they're, they're just not happy with the fact that it's not the actual country of Italy that's developing these talents. It's, like, diaspora that's providing talent. And maybe they're just upset at the fact that, it, no local talent has shown some promise. But then again, you know, like if you That's actually on us. take... A, That's on us. No, but if you actually take a look at things, Nyanto is, for example, right now one of the more promising players on the Azzurri. Uh I think he's Nyanto... Born was, yeah, exactly. He was born like, in Italy, it, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah he was born... But, I w- but would you say he was really developed by the Italians? Because, I mean, he left Inter to go, no, you know, grow his game switch. in Zurich. So, yeah, so... Yeah. And I think that was the best decision. Yeah, that's a good, that's a good counter argument, and 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 that's I think that's the glaring issue. And I and I know that we've all said this. Everybody in this podcast yeah. has said it. We it's not like as if this is a brand new concept. And I'm pretty sure people have already realized this. But I think right now fans that are that are not as well tuned or in tune with uh, Calcio as we are, you know, they're not seeing the fact that uh, you know there's a big issue in Italy right now with youth development and. Until that gets fixed, we're going to have to rely on our lineage overseas, you know, just to, you know, potentially get a a star player or not even a star player, but a player who's going to be effective for the national team. You know, Uh, there's obviously other factors involved, too, as to why some players are not performing versus others. But we'll get to that later. But I think that's basically why some people are just enraged at the fact that, you know, we have to like, what do we have to get an Argentinian Italian for? It's like, well, I mean. If you actually would pay attention, our development in the actual league itself is horrible for the young Italians. But anyway, I mean, yeah, yeah. As, as an Inter fan, it's it is it is frustrating. You know, you see these kids who to help you win a, a primavera, you know, scudetto, and you get excited that you're like, oh man, maybe they can finally break through. And then, you know, last summer we ended up selling our best primavera player. That I mean, some people were arguing me on Twitter when I said that you know he's the best player I've seen, but like. You know, they're like, oh, what about Balotelli? I was like, well, Balotelli didn't really play for the Primavera. Like, he had a few games, and he was called up at, at, at 17, 18, and he was already playing, you know, on the first team. So, to me, that although, yes, technically he was in the academy, he didn't really play with them, you know, per se. So, you know, Cesare Casade was a guy who was, you know, when I watched him play, he he reminds me a little bit of, like, a hybrid of, like, a Frank Lampard and, and, and Milinkovic Savic type player. You know, he's good in the air. He can get on, you know, he he's loves to maraud into the box and get headers on goal and somehow with how bad Inter's midfield was last year you know with with Vidal and, and Galliardini coming off the bench this kid couldn't get an opportunity to come up and then we ended up selling him to to Chelsea for 20 million in the summer which you know what that's great to get 20 million for a player who's never had first team minutes but at the same time like so these kids have to leave Italy to get an opportunity to to make a name for themselves like that that's frustrating as a fan and and you know you I don't want our. It's already hard enough to keep our talent in Italy. Whether we get them, you know, cheap. You know, uh, you look at at Napoli. You know, I mean, I'm sure you're worried about in the summer maybe Cavada and 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 Osimen leaving. You know, because you know they're, they're fantastic players. You know, I have to worry about Lautaro, Barella, Bastoni. Like everybody's gonna have people that are gonna leave. We're, we what are we doing to help keep players here and then promote them? You know, and make them feel like they're gonna be a part of the first team where they're spending all this time in our primaveras and academies. Like. It's it's frustrating as a fan to see all these kids like ending up leaving and and trying to seek opportunities elsewhere because they don't feel they're gonna get it here. I mean, I think I think one way for them just to quickly answer that. Sorry, uh, Adri, for interrupting. I think one way uh, to um, to to respond to that is by you know finding some success. You know, like for, like I think the league success for Napoli. What, if it happens, I'm still going to say if, even though it's a very like 99% chance of happening mathematically. <laughs> mathematically, it's 99% possible, but you know, just saying. Um, if when Apple wins the Scudetto, and if by any chance, you know, they win the Champions League or even make it to the semis, you know, that would give them a, a, an argument to say like, okay, well, we have a good thing here. Why leave? Even if it's, even if it's for more sure. money, 
I mean, players like I know I know money talks. I do. I do. I will never argue against that because we've seen guys like Insigne leave because he got a 15 million uh, Canadian dollar contract over there in Toronto, which, you know, he wasn't going to get that anywhere in Europe. He wasn't. So what's that, that like anywhere. 30 dollars American? <laughs> no, no, no. You're off by a bit. It's twenty five dollars. <laughs> no, OK, my bad, my bad. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, like, like you can't blame him for taking but for taking that contract. But yeah, absolutely. But also it's like. Players like to win. They like to play in competitive teams. They like to play against the best. And if they would, let's say, I don't know, like leave like like the rumors for like Chelsea or like uh, what positions Man United in? Like what, seventh? No, they're like, I think they're like third. They're top four right now currently. They're top four they're right third. now. But I yeah, thought yeah. at one point they were outside looking in. I they think. were outside. Yeah, yeah. Early okay. in the year they were struggling. Yeah, but still, like all these like these these Premier League, Premier League teams, you know, it's like, oh, yeah, they're offering them a lot of money. But. They're not going to really want to leave just to go play Europa League after, you know, pushing for the league title in Napoli and also pushing for a potential Champions League final or semifinal. You know, like there's still a lot of soccer left to be played, but Mm -hmm. I think that would kind of stay a factor. So I think obviously the way we can keep our talent is if like is actually by retaining them and actually pushing for those bigger competitions. I think I think players need to start to see the like they need to be convinced to see that look, especially this year that we have Inter Milan and Napoli in quarterfinals saying that guys, we're not far off from the competition in Europe. Even though financially we're not the biggest uh league competitively and talent wise we're still competing with all these guys. So money can't always buy you the best team. So you know, like, I think they should start seeing PSG, the fact that... Man City. Yeah, and you know, and it's like, I think they should... Start, Man City, they spend on so many... How many money... Uh, how many monies? I'll see another <laughs> how many how many, mil- how many how many monies? <laughs> how many millions throughout all these years and have yet to win a Champions League title? You know, PSG, they spend almost a billion... Almost a billion euros in... I in, love in seeing the past, them fail, though. Like, oh. like, the past, what, 10 years? And they have yet to win a Champions League title, you know? So, like... I, I think if the players are convinced that, look, yes, I get it. You know, you think you deserve X dollars. And I don't think they're against the fact that it's like, look, as long as I get this money, I don't mind staying in the in Italy or whatever. I don't think that's the issue. But it's like you need to also show them, like, if you stay, you're you're fighting for a league title if you're in Inter shoes, Milan shoes, Juve shoes, Napoli shoes, you know. Heck, you can even look outside, outside in Triere Sete Sorelle. You know, you could say, like, Roma, for example, now you could argue you're potentially in a Champions League spot. You know, like, Lazio, too, if they get their bearings together, can also be a potential Champions League team. Atalanta, you know, like, if they, you say, like, yeah. look, you stay here, you have a chance of actually playing in Champions League, which is the best competition if you're a European player. And you know what? On certain teams, you have a chance to win the league as well, and that's fascinating. And I think, I think if players are opened up to that, or if their eyes are open to that, I think they will. Uh, I mean, I, logically speaking, they should be convinced to stay. But at the end of the day, money talks. That's why, like, I, I, like, John Marco, you said it perfectly. I am worried because, you know, like, Cavaratskelia, I think, would stay a bit more because it's only his first season. But all CMN is a very realistic possibility that he leaves. You know, he's worshipped and he's loved in, in Italy. You know, like, he, he knows it and he says it too. He realizes it. And when that comment came out, it was just him speaking, like, in general. It's like a dream of his is to play in the Premier League one day. He wasn't saying that he wanted to leave Napoli to go play the Prem this year. Yeah, yeah. It, and if that's the guy's dream, that's the guy's dream. You guys can't, like, you can't hit, hate the guy for saying yeah, yeah, that. Yeah, you can't fault the guy, like, especially if he's not, a, you know, it's not like he, he's Italian and he's saying he wants to go play, you know, like. Yeah. He didn't even start with Napoli, so it's like, I mean, it's great that you got him and he's and he's performing as well as he is. I can't knock yeah. that at all. It's it's fantastic season he's having. But, like, if that's his dream, like, I mean, same thing. Like, if, I mean, if somebody, like, if Lautaro came out and said his dream is to play for Real Madrid, who am I to be upset, really? Like, yeah. you know, like if, he, if he wants to go, I, I'm the type of person where it's like, if you don't want to be at my club, I don't really want you at the club. Not that, not that I'm saying he, you know, he's got to be sold right away, but it's like, yeah, if you eventually you want to go and the right offer comes, I'm okay with you leaving. That's, that's yeah, exactly. Right. And that's business. That's sports. That's business. So yeah. Sorry, I, I, got, I don't. Even, I didn't mean to get us off topic there. My bad. No, no, no. Yeah. But it's a good point to bring up. It's a good point yeah. to bring up. No, but I, I, I agree with 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 even what John Mark you just said. Like at the end of the day, I'm a Juventus fan. If a player wants to stay, if a player wants to go, I, I want I want to see my team win. Uh, that's all that matters, you know. Exactly. Yeah. Look, uh, we we lost Dybala, we lost uh, Delit in, in these in just last year alone. Two fan favorites. And you're Does better really without them. My life, exactly. Does it really change anything? Does it really change anything for? Okay, 
obviously Dybala stays in the league, but the lit leaving the lit leaving the league does it really change anything to the league? Does it have any effect on the national team? Not really. Exactly. The only the only effect that had on the league was that Bremer went to uh, Juve and there was a new defender spot in uh, available in, in Torino. 